focus. There we go. What is going on everyone? It's Kelly here and right now I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. Well, Gabe and I woke up this morning and it was 32 degrees out. And if y'all know me, I'm a hardcore Floridian, so I am freezing. We picked the coldest day out of the year to go offshore fishing here in Jacksonville. It's a little noisy this morning, very busy morning. We got boats going in the water. We got a big old ship over here coming into port right now. Joey is gonna be our captain today and he is loading up the boat, getting everything ready to go. What we're targeting today, everything. We're gonna try to go for some APs, Vermilion Snapper. Should be a really good day. <laughs> Although it is freezing, but we're bundled up, we're ready to go. And well, I'll see you guys out on the water. All right guys, we just got to our fishing spot and we are going to fish for bee liners. Now, I just learned what the term bee liner is, and that's a vermilion snapper. I fished for vermilion snapper down in Key West with my friend Hunter, but we deep dropped. I'm not sure what we're doing today for bee liners. What are we doing today for them? So we're gonna cut up some cuttlefish and Boston mackerel in the little, uh little bite-sized pieces for them and we're gonna drop uh, in this case a four hook rig to uh, get done with these bee liners fast it's uh, we uh, in Jacksonville it is pretty different than what you guys do in South Florida so all you Miami people and Keys people you go into uh, three four five hundred feet of water to get these and we get them you know we can start catching them pretty decent here at about 70 feet so awesome. all right so while he's raking up that I'm gonna throw this vertical jig real quick Gabe through it once and hooked up to an AJ. Ready? And you're rolling. We're gonna Johnny jig it up. Let's go. You're not scared of dropping things over the side? No. <laughs> I'm so scared of heights, it scares me when I do it. I know, there is this massive, beautiful bridge. Was it sunset yesterday? Yeah, I took a video of it. It was sunset. Really tall bridge here in Jacksonville. And Gabe was driving. He was getting so scared to drive over it. But it's funny because one of my favorite things when I'm driving is to drive over bridges because I love overlooking them. Alright. Oh, there we go. Oh, I guess they like the slower on. jigging. That's why they call it slow pitch jigging. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> well, hey, when we were in Mexico, they liked it fast. I was trying to get over her good side. <laughs> Thank you. That's a little hurt down there. Little AJ. Right, oh, you trying to get back in the boat. Is that a shark no, a big barracuda. Big cuda? And a remora. Well, no. oh, that's an almaco. We can keep him. Oh, an almaco? I would say he was kind of a lot flatter than yeah. an AJ. So these are very, very similar. So the difference between these and AJ's is first of all, this, this is obviously a very uh, much taller fin and you can kind of see that they're just a taller fish in general. Yeah, they're like more flat too. Yeah, uh, these are slightly better eating than an amberjack. A lot of people prefer these over the actual AJ. That's the biggest one I've ever seen of those. I've oh seen girl, them like you today. are in for it today. Oh gosh. <laughs> is that what you catch on the weed lines in the Keys? Yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah, when we see, catch them, we have, we have absolute, we have massive ones out here. So when we go to the break later, you will uh, hopefully see a couple of them. Because we hopefully. see all the little baby ones where we live under the weed lines. What are you doing down here? You uh, trying to catch frog dogs? <laughs> yeah. Straight up, I want your opinion. The Do frog you like dogs. frog dogs? Yes, I love them. Are you kidding me? They kept me warm on the way here. It was 32 degrees when we left the dock this morning. Yeah, that sucks. Oh man, now the sun's shining, so I shed one out of my eight layers of clothes, so I'm feeling a little bit warmer now. <laughs> Alright, let's go catch some uh, bee liners. Yeah, send her down. We got some squid on there? We got some cuttlefish. Cuttlefish? Cuddles, okay. cute cuddles, yep. Cuttlefish. So the deal with these bee liners is, sometimes this doesn't matter, but usually what the deal is, all the trash fish, grunts, you know, small sea bass, whatever, they like to hang out right on the bottom and those bee liners and trigger fish and whatnot like to hang out up in the water. So we're gonna see if the trash is fired up and it probably will be. Probably about to come up with four grunts, but after that, what I tell people that fish with me is on your first drop, you need to count how long it takes you to get to the bottom yep. and every single drop after that 
Take about five seconds off. Automatic. Uh, We're only down for about 1.5 seconds. What have we got? A grouper candy. Grouper? Okay. Grouper. Squants, squants. Alrighty. That's gonna be some good grouper bait. We're gonna use those grunts to catch some big, big old biggins, is what's gonna happen. Ooh. Now we're gonna take them offshore 20 more miles, and we are in hopes of catching a big mutton snapper or a grouper or whatever just wants to bite. We're gonna find out. That's the best part about you know going offshore, offshore to the break here. There is an unbelievable amount of species that you can catch. So you can catch some giant almacos, giant amberjack. You can catch red snapper out there sometimes. Mutton snapper, big mangroves, gags, or the occasional black scamps. I mean, there's so many different species that we have and I'm not paying attention. I like the variety. I do too. We get a lot of cool exotics too. All right, Joey just reeled in a nice bee liner. Nice berm. <gasps> you got a da -da 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 -da. Almaco. All right. There you go. Yes. Alamac, Alamac. I want to flip him like a bass. Hold up. There you go. First Amoco, that's pretty decent size. All right, guys, so with these Amocos, they look so similar to Amberjacks. Oh, Remora. Oh, God. <laughs> the Remora almost got me again. So you guys can go to that Fish Rules app, and you guys type in Amoco, and then type in Amberjack, Almaco, Almaco, Amaco, Almaco. Type in Almaco and Amberjack, and you guys can see the difference between the fish. Check out that peck fin. He's going in the box. In the box. In the box. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this one. How do you? Yep. Oh, yes. Yeah. Lay it over your lap. A I can't lot believe. Easier, isn't it? I can't believe no one has shown me this. You learned today, girl. I'm learning so oh, much. Oh, no, no, get away! Here, here. No, you gotta, you gotta come rot to rot to whenever you're tangled. Oh, okay. Lift your rod up, lift your rod up. Yeah. That's why I was pulling so hard. Double Almacos. Yeah. It's a double, it's a double. Just come right now. And I'm still on. You got a man? Still on. Just hanging out while you were in the Look who you have. Woo! Get him in. Oh, God. Get him. Good one. Get him. Yeah, I had a girl. All right. Woo. All right, guys. We had a little bit of a tangle, but I finally got my first bee liner here in Jacksonville. That's a nice one. Beautiful colors. Oh, fry. Oh, yeah. Hi, guys. Yeah. We got one. Two, double in. Double, there we go. Gabe just got two. There you go. Little Duval double right there, boy. Had to break out my old salty. Some 40 pound floor. There you go. Two little weights. Mm -hmm. And listen to your captain. Joey said drop it to the bottom, reel it up off the bottom, just like clockwork. There you go. Doubling up. These things are starting to crowd around us. <laughs> we got GoPros hanging upside down. All kinds uh. of things hanging everywhere. Pretty one. Beautiful. Mm. Oh, Gabe, look at you. Gabe's a... He's cheating. He's using the light leader. <laughs> We're using 80. He's using 40. Chewing. He's not a keeper, is he? Oh, I just. What uh -oh. happened to me? Oh, God. Oh, uh, he might be. He just it was not coming up like so one. nice. A double. Woo! Double. Woo -hoo -hoo. There we go. That's what. The other one must have came on. Double verms. There you go. Ah! Yeah, ah! <laughs> oh, That's an easy unhook over there. Firm down. Doubled up. All right. Oh, he's pooping everywhere. Let's get him in the box. Oh, God, we got a pooper. <laughs> Dang, we got more fish than we've caught in Jupiter in a while. Uh, yeah, for real. <laughs> and we haven't been fishing but for like 30 it's minutes. Not even that. This is only the first spot. Yeah. There we go. Ooh. There you go, second right. That's a good one. So this time, Joey said we're off the rocks, so instead of leaving our bait about 20 feet off the bottom, we went ahead and just let it all the way down to the bottom into the sand. And I found them. Just gotta get in the rhythm, kind of find where they are. They move around the column a lot. And uh, you just gotta locate them. And once you do that, you can crush them. 
How did I end up, the cameraman and you are using my rod? You, well, one, you gave me your rod, and then my GoPro <laughs> died. <laughs> That's because you're my favorite, this babe. <laughs> Pun intended. Oh, I didn't even think. favorite rod. Wow, look even, at that. What a I salesman. Didn't, I didn't even think about the favorite. <laughs> Yeah, good one. Ooh, a red snapper. <laughs> <laughs> Little check in. I was like, dang, this is a fat one. <laughs> I thought that's what I had, but I had two. Oh god. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, god. <laughs> Put you some fresh you know, Boston on there. You know you just did the ultimate sin, right? What was that? When YouTubing and you catch fish, you hold them and you explain to oh, the I'm camera sorry. what's going on. <laughs> no wonder so... we have ten thousand so. <laughs> <laughs> So I just caught a red snapper and one, they are out of season and he was too small. So simply put him back. In the Actually, ocean. technically he wasn't too small. If you want to keep no. that one when we have open season, legally when it is in season, when they give us our super long four days a year to catch them, you yeah. can actually keep any size that oh, you really? want. Oh yeah. Oh, well, I've, I've actually had people want to keep those because they want to whole fry them. Oh, and it's okay. pretty hard to pull fry a 20 pound snapper, so if there's like six, a family of six, they'll keep one about that size. So my very first red snapper I ever caught was actually in the Marquesas in Key West in mangroves. And it was about this big. Pretty cool. Yeah, right? It was a red snapper. I was like, what? In the mangroves. Really cool, actually. Good. You can wait until I reel one up. Well, I like getting the bite, especially you have... Oh, you oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. These ones fight a lot harder. This is another red. Say that. No. <laughs> Don't wish that evil on me. It is going to be the biggest bee liner. The biggest. The biggest. <laughs> All right, he's coming up. Is he? Is he there? Well, he was. <laughs> <laughs> he was, and he, then he heard me, and he's like, "Let me give you a little head shake, real That's quick." That's a heck of a start, right there, guys. Yeah. That's a. Look at our basket. Yeah. And it's a beeliner. Yes. A nice a one, too. One. It's a really good one. Nice. That's a big hey, one. Uh, pretty, pretty beeliner. There you go. Nice. All right, guys. So I'm going to call it quits. Gabe's going to fish some more. We're actually going to go change spots and go target a different species. But we caught a lot of our beeliners, a.k.a. vermilion snappers, here off of Jacksonville. What I'm going to do is when we get back, I'm going to gut them, gill them, I'm gonna cook them whole, either on the grill or in the oven, not sure yet. But I really wanna cook this fish whole. Beautiful fish. Maybe I'll try to cook this whole on that little grill back there. Maybe, you think that I'm gonna do that? All right guys, we have our beeline snapper here, AKA vermilion snapper. And I'm gonna cook these whole. Tear them out. First thing I do is I'm gonna descale the fish. Usually I use a spoon, but I don't have a spoon right now, so I'm just gonna use the back side of this knife. And just go against the scales. Just descale it. Lift up that little peck fin. scales up there, that tip of the knife. Other side. This one's belly is bloated. You'd be bloated too if we drug you up from <laughs> 180 foot of water. Oh yeah. So many scales. So when I'm prepping a fish to be cooked whole, I normally wear gloves just so when I gut and gill the fish, I can just grab it with no worries of getting poked or anything by the gills. And it gives me a better grip on the guts. All right. Clean your knife, get rid of the scales. All right, clean them off, make sure all those scales are gone. Get yourself a little knife. And if you're gonna gut them, just poke a little hole, Oop. make a little incision, just to his booty hole right there. Open him up. Oh yeah, cut a little this way. This right here gets a little tricky 
this little part because it's nice and hard. So if you had a pair of shears, like it would be a lot easier just cut that, but that's all right. These fish aren't too gutty, like other fish I've gutted. Just get a good grip on them guts and just pull them right out. Them birds are happy today. They're getting so many scraps. This part can get a little tedious just because you really want to make sure you get every single gross gutty piece out. You might have to take your knife in there and cut some of that. I don't really know what you would call it, fascia or just that little skin piece that holds some organs together. I'll tell you what, my hands are so cold. <laughs> So for the gilling, pop open his gills. You could just stick your fingers in there. This is why I wear gloves, just because it just makes it a lot easier just to pull them right out. It's very, very important to gill, especially gill your fish when you're cooking them whole or if you're boiling them for soup because your fish or soup will taste like really, really fishy or a little bloody if you boil those um, or cook the gills. These vermilions have really easy gills to come out. When you get to like big muttons and groupers, it takes a little time to kill them. <laughs> All right, last step, wash it off. And look at this throat too. The throat has a lot of meat on it in every fish. Check that out. I'll probably go in there with a the knife and just clean out the little, the little blood vessels right there. But other than that, there you have it. Your beautiful whole vermilion snapper that at our Airbnb that we're staying at here in Jacksonville, there's a little grill on the back porch and I'm gonna go ahead. Hopefully this fish will fit on it, but I'm gonna go ahead and put him on that charcoal grill tonight and cook him up. All right guys, we are back in the kitchen in this little cute cottage that we rented off of Airbnb. And we have our vermilion snapper that I'm gonna cook whole on this cute little grill that we have outside. So what I went ahead and did is cut three slits in the fish. I'm gonna go ahead and do it to the other side as well. Boom. Boom. Them. You can also on bigger fish you can go the other way as well but since it's just a smaller fish I'm just gonna do the three slits. All right next step I'm gonna add some butter in these little slits here. Butter pretty much makes everything better. Can't complain with butter. Oh yeah and just repeat on the other side. I'm gonna put a little less butter on this side because the other side I was pretty hefty with the butter. <laughs> Boom. All right, so chopped up here. I was going to just put the chopped up ingredients on the fish, but we have a mini blender over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend it all and make kind of like a sauce with it. So I have some garlic here. All right, went ahead and put a little olive oil in there. There's our garlic. We have our parsley here. Ooh, I should've got cilantro too. That would've been good. And I have some ginger. I love ginger. All right. What's that? We have Joey out there helping Gabe clean the throat of a fish. Gabe's doing some interesting work on his channel today. All I'm gonna say is jellyfish. That's it. What you got? I'm gonna add a little more olive oil. All right, let's see what this puppy can do. Not bad, not bad. 
I'm gonna do them add a little bit more olive oil. Oh, oh that being loud again while you're filming? Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that. As he slams his cell phone yeah. down. Oh, I can't even grab it. I got fish all over my hands. You're good. You're good. I don't mind. All right. I'm just going to shake that up like that. All right. I'm liking the way this looks. I almost should have put more in there. Check it out, it smells really good. Mm. All right, so I was just gonna lay this fish out on the grill, but me and Blue Gabe found this cool little thing that we could fold it over and make a nice little grate for the fish. That way, hopefully, it's a little less messy on the grill. All right, here we go. Gonna pour half of this on this side. Try to open that up a little. I'm using my fingers, push it in. Mm. I'm super excited. I've, I've seen people cook fish like this before, but I've never tried it. I've only done it in the oven and I just use like salt and pepper and butter. So I'm excited. I'm gonna use two lemon slices and just put them right on top like that. And hopefully I'll kind of keep the ingredients in the fish. I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over. Beautiful. I'm so happy we found this. All right, we're pouring the rest in this bad boy. Ooh. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I'm gonna try it like, let's see. Scoop some in his belly cavity here. There we go. You're gonna, when you cook, you're gonna get messy. You gotta use your hands. That's how real people cook. Using your hands. I'm just gonna rub some olive oil around the fish. All right, beautiful. Again with the lemon, boom, boom. So the thing is, I gotta try to figure out how I can. Here, hold the camera. Let a pro in here. Wait, wait, hold on. I got this. I got this. Pro fish carrier. I'm gonna do this. That's a really it's cool like thing. It's like a burrito. Where did, is that? They just sold that at the grocery store? Yeah, we were just walking past it and found it. That is like the new thing to do for these whole fish. There we go. It's better than wrapping it in tinfoil. Did I do okay? Yeah. All right, so Joey here said he wanted to say something. Do you so, have an interesting fact about these? So uh, a lot of my background in fishing is commercial fishing. And in Northeast Florida, and most of the Atlantic all the way up to the Carolinas, the main thing, if you ask any commercial fisherman what is the number one thing they target, it is big vermilion snapper. The reason being is a lot of high-end restaurants, they serve whole fish and this is what you're going to get, a whole fried snapper like that. So this is high-end rest restaurant grade stuff Ooh, right here. That's cool Cooked know. on a high-end grill. Yeah, super hey, high-end. Don't is, talk crap about that Weber. This came with the Airbnb. All right, we ready? Thank you. Oh yeah. You can fit another fish on there. Listen, this is my video. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that is steaming. All right, beautiful. Should we put the lid on it? Or just let it cook like that? Yeah, why not? All right guys, we'll see you back in a couple minutes. Well, the AC just kicked on. It's looking pretty good. So I went ahead and put the fish on the side of the grill. That way the flames aren't going up right in the center. But I think what I should have done is put the butter on last because when the butter drips, the flames do come up, but that's all right. I'm just monitoring it and just keep flipping it. But, but what about this? But what about that? You putting that on the grill? Should you show them a sneak peek of what exactly this came off of? Sure, I'll show it right now. I think we got a grouper on. That's a gray body right there, boys. Big one. Saw 25 pounder. Yep, that's the throw. All right, you take yours off and I'll put yep. mine on. All right, let's do a swap a roo. Swap a roo. All right, little guy. You're looking toasty. All 
All right, we're gonna let this cool down before we even attempt it. It looks good and smells good. I know that. Oh, I think it's gonna be really good. I think. Oh, you. I think no, you need to you eat need the eyeball. The eyeball. I said it first. <laughs> you heard it here first. I said you need to eat the eyeball first. We both looked at it and we're like, dang, no. There's two eyes. <laughs> How convenient the snicker bars are right on your I cooking know. station. Mm, I didn't eat one yet. I did eat one of these earlier though. I don't know what they are, but they're pretty good. And she got in the truck and goes, um, I'm like, what? And then she found it. She <laughs> thought I ate it. I thought you did. All right, guys, we have Joey here. He's the captain we went fishing with yesterday and caught all those fish. And if you guys want to go on that charter, which clearly y'all see that we slayed it, I'll put all the information in the description below. But right now we're going to try this fish. It smells so good. That it does. It's about an $80 dish right here if you get that at any restaurant in America. Oh yeah. Nice whole fish. You want to eat the eyeball? Is it hard? I feel like it gets hard yeah, once it's you... hard like a golf ball inside. Yeah. It is hard. I mean, you can just swallow it whole like no, no, don't put that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Ooh, the skin comes right off. Oh my God, I'm so, this is honestly one of my favorite ways to eat fish. Oh yeah, it's done. Mm -hmm. I was a little spooked <laughs> that I wasn't gonna be done, but. Mm. Really good. Oh yeah, I gotta get that all the way up to the shoulder mm, there. The I personally like eating the skin. The skin's the healthiest there. part yeah. of the yeah. fish. Did you leave the scales on up here? Can no, I didn't. Yes, there you one, did. There was one scale. Hey, you yes, know there's did. only oh, one person to blame for that, isn't there, Joey? I watched you do it. <laughs> I left it on there just for you. Thank you. All right, guys, hold up. I forgot the most important thing, and that is my sea salt. Voila. Bone apple teeth. Bone apple teeth, my dude. Oh yeah. Gotta watch those rib cages. Mm -hmm. There we go. Now the flavor is bursting. Ooh, the sea salt. Crispy. <laughs> oh, crispy on the skin. Look at that right there. Mm-hmm. Man, that's everything. really good. I'm gonna have to. First of all, I'm gonna have to get me a ton of these things, whatever these are. Yeah, I, I know. I'll find those on Amazon or whatever. They're at, they're at Publix. Should Publix you put here. it on your Amazon store? I should, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Gabe, I want you to try this. And give me your honest opinion. Don't eat that piece because I want that because it's crispy, okay? <laughs> Uh-oh. What do you mean, because it's crispy? It's crispy. It's like a cracker, dude. I'm just... That's my favorite TikToker. It is my favorite TikToker. That's money, dude. Dude, I so I made his, uh, uh, what was it? I made my entire family his low country boil for Christmas Eve dinner and it was fire dude It was so good. Oh my gosh. You Am I the I'm only sure. one here who does not watch TikTok? Oh, thank you, Gabriel. These are what Oh people... no! You did not! I was I was so happy. Listen, he is notorious for doing that. That's money, dude. <laughs> you did what's the odds that you like that guy and I like that guy? Because he makes good food and he's funny. He's got his giant spoon that's a paddle for a canoe. I'm, I want to get that. I want to get his, uh, um, what's the uh, the cast iron bowl that he has. Can we call somebody out real quick? Who? Uh-oh. What, what's all this right here? Listen. Listen. Y'all were yelling at me. I am trying to play it. This, trying to scale wait, it as what? much as I can. No excuses. <laughs> I always told my players and I was coaching, there's no excuses. There's only... <laughs> You guys, that's the, you fish with him, you're getting yelled at, but you're going to catch a lot of fish. Listen, so I coach, I coach football. I didn't even give my opinion. That's very, very good fish. Thank that you. It is very good fish. I coached football in the SEC for four years. I'm going to coach you well and properly. So if you're mad at me for coaching you properly, then that's your own fault. That's a personal <laughs> thing. That's your fault, actually. But at least you don't do it in a mean way. I don't do it in a mean it's way. It's a very encouraging way. Exactly, yeah. Oh, uh, you know, just... Bill in the boat with 18 to 20 pound muttons. No I didn't babies. catch up here. I didn't catch any Whoa. muttons all day. No, I got two ah. more. You hooked up? Don't lose them. Lift, cuz! <laughs> there you go. Oh my goodness. Muttons biting. Maybe we are, we are staying. Oh, oh god, lift, 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 lift. I'm trying to lift! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys. Hey, right, hold on before you end oh, it. Oh my goodness. Should we give a little sneak peek? Oh, hold up. Y'all want a sneak peek? <laughs> I'm going to eat the rest of this up, okay? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> 
Fine. All right, a little sneak peek. Show us what you got. What? what? That's it. That's all you guys get. All right, guys, I am ending this video. If you guys want to come check out this amazing cute cottage that we're staying at here in Jacksonville, or if you want to go have a sleigh day in Jacksonville, you got it right here. Stay at the Airbnb, go sleigh day offshore, bada bing, bada boom. Come fish with Joey. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Thank you guys for just everything. <laughs> See you guys in the next video.